And we are live. Okay. I hope that um, we are live now. Please, if we are, let me know in the chat. Okay. So I can. Okay. I see myself on uh, on the screen in the, on YouTube. But you guys, let me know if you can see me. If you can hear me well. If everything goes well, please let me know so that I can know and we can get going. It says excellent connection. I see myself live, but for some reason I don't see chat. Okay, let me see. Okay. All right. Yes. Hello. Okay. Hey guys. All right. So please let me know if you can see me, if you can hear me well, so we can get going. I have my mic right here next to me. Hopefully the sound is going to be better. Everything is okay. Okay. Perfect. Wonderful. 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 All right. I guess everything is 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 going great right now. Okay, so a couple of, let me go to, okay, the chat, there it is. Okay, so here's the chat, as you can see, you're going to be right next to me sometimes. So please, guys, for, if you want me to see your question, we're going to go through our regular kind of a session right now, but after that, while we are talking, okay, I'm not going to stop for too long, but while we're talking, the only way for me to get your question, for me to see your question, is if you type at be fluent and then you see this pops up right here right up top you click on this not just this not just be fluent and and this is not gonna work look if I, if I press send see I don't see anything it doesn't highlight anyhow but if I go be fluent I type in B right and then this thing pops up up top I click on it and I say how are you see it's gonna be an orange on my end this will give me a sign that it's a question, and now answer it, okay? If I don't see this orange, I'll skip your question, all right? Hope hope that uh, hope that's clear. Okay, uh, let's let's talk about about the topic at hand that we that we have for today. It's practical learning. Practical learning is the best type of learning, in my opinion. It's the most fun. It's pretty much what you have been uh, learning all this Russian for. Is to be able to finally. You know, have a conversation and learn from that versus learning from a book. Open up a book and see the rules and see the endings and all that kind of stuff. That to me is a little, a little more boring and a little more kind of, um, how do I say this? It's not natural. It's not authentic, right? A person who speaks Russian, they never almost study Russian by the book. They have learned the majority of their Russian by speaking it, right? So why, how are you different? Of course, you are not in Russia since you're a very young age. Of course, you, you might not have had as much of time listening to Russian and hearing it and figuring it out from context. So you are different from a little child who, you know, grew up in Russia. But I think you have an advantage over them. Typically, people think that, okay, kids have a much higher tendency to learning languages. I think that's the, that's the biggest myth of all is because I have seen an adult learn Russian and become fluent in it in six months. That's the, the fastest I have seen uh, out there. So six months, a person did it. They spent eight hours every single day for six months and they became fluent. Can a little kid <laughs> be fluent in Russian in just six months? I don't think so. Even if they study hard, even if they learn, and even if they you know learn with the books and all all that stuff, they won't be able to be fluent in six months. But we as adults, we have an advantage over kids, which is our brains are more developed, right? We we are more logical. We are we are more aware of our surroundings. We are more intellectual as as people, right? So we have an advantage over over kids. But how do we take advantage of the practical learning and how do we learn through practice? How do we go away from getting a book, reading it, okay, this is this rule, this is that rule, reading the vocabulary list, trying to memorize all this list. You know, it's it's necessary, of course, to do that as well, to learn with, through the theory, but how do we learn through practice? How do we go out and start speaking Russian and learn from that? So we have... Uh, I have a couple of things for you today, which we will cover. Here it is. We're going to cover beginner, intermediate, and advanced kind of my advice to each group. Beginner, intermediate, advanced. And this advice will not come from, um, will not be just like do this, 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 10 things. Of course, we can't do that. But I want to focus on one specific thing for each group. So right now, 
think about which level you're on. Are you are you on, on the beginner level? Are you on an intermediate level? Or you're in the advanced group? If uh, how can you judge that is um, can you make a, a, a basic sentence? If you can, then you might be a beginner slash intermediate. Can you have a very basic conversation? If, if I asked you, hey, how are you? What have you done today? What are your plans for tomorrow? If you can pretty much well explain uh, your your plans, then you're going to be in, in, the, in the middle one in the intermediate. Let me actually make myself bigger for now. Like that. And if you can have... A more than just a basic conversation. If uh, if I asked you what kind of movies do you like, you probably will answer me the the question pretty well. Then you're in the advanced group. So pretty much that's kind of like the vague separation. Of course, there's no clear kind of borders between beginner and intermediate, and it's kind of like all vague. But you will get the idea. You can kind of probably judge yourself based on this beginner, intermediate, and advanced kind of uh, separation. Okay. So if you're a beginner, let me make myself smaller now. If you're a beginner, what you should be doing every day to learn through practice is make sentences, okay? You make sentences. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because you already probably um, are listening to some music. Maybe you are already watching some shows. Maybe you are doing something already with practice, right? With, uh, with Russian media and watching Russian YouTube and stuff. But... Making sentences is something that I see a lot of beginners kind of overlook. The reason why making sentences is crucial uh, is because... Let me make myself a little bigger so you guys can see me. I'm going to switch to the full screen of, of myself in a, just a short second. The reason why making sentences for a beginner is crucial is because you are not yet ready to have a full conversation. So it's going to be a little bit overwhelming. You're going to be kind of frustrated that you cannot uphold a conversation. And it might be actually a negative experience for you because you don't feel in control when you have that you know, conversation. So it might not bring th that much of positive kind of thoughts and positive emotions. So a lot of the times jumping too far ahead can be dangerous in this kind of uh, sense. But with making a sentence, the reason why it's great is because you, you, bam is because you are making a sentence with the knowledge that you have now, right? You, you get all the knowledge th that you currently have. You make five sentences about your day. You trying to gather vocabulary. You trying to think of vocabulary. Okay, uh, how do I say, I want to drink water? Okay, uh, я хочу is I want. To drink is pit. Я хочу pit. Ah, how do I say water? I forgot water, right? So you're challenging your current knowledge to recall certain words, to recall a certain vocabulary, to make it into a sentence, okay? You are challenging yourself to do that. That's the first thing. That's the first reason why it's... Um, okay, I'm just checking the... Okay, cool. I'm checking the chat so I can see if everybody can hear me and everything is good. So, um, <clears throat> that's what students t tend to overlook. Is they simply get bird in all these videos they watch? I mean, of course, thank you for watching. Be fluent, but... This is something that you should be doing on top of that, right? So don't just watch the videos that we post, other people's uh, videos as well. Don't just get buried in books, in courses. Practice. Practice what you're learning. Make a sentence. If you have learned a new, a new topic, past tense, make a sentence with it. Make five sentences about past tense. Get practical. Start applying what you are learning. Don't just kind of learn it and, oh... I know this topic, I'm good, I'm going to just move on to the next one. No, hold on, stop. You learn past tense, make a sentence about the past. Practice what you have learned. First is going to make the current knowledge settle much strongly in your memory versus you just kind of learn it and then you move on to the next thing. It's not as concrete in your mind yet. It's not as concrete in your knowledge yet. You have to sit down and you have to actually practice it. Secondly, like I already mentioned, your vocabulary has to improve. At all stages, if we go back to the uh, slides, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, all these stages will require a good vocabulary. It will require a vocabulary, an ever-expanding vocabulary. It will require that because languages is pretty much a combination of words put together, 
right? So you have to know all these words to put together. You have to know them. You have to know a lot of words. So when you're going to be making sentences, you'll be, secondly, on top of the grammatical kind of reinforcement, you will be practicing vocabulary. You will know what you're missing. For example, like I mentioned, if you want to say, I want to drink water, if you don't know how to say water, when you make that sentence, it's going to be a clear sign that you have to go back and learn that word because you have missed it in a sentence. So my recommendation for all of you guys beginners, if you are not doing that already, is to make five sentences at least every day, okay? Or every day whenever you study. If you study every day, first thing that you do is make five sentences. Maybe you study every other day. Well, then make, make, you know, do that every other day. Of course, do it every time you practice pretty much. You as a beginner will con consume a lot of information. You will intake, learn, 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 learn. On top of just learning it, you have to produce something. You have to come up with something. You have to use what you, what you know now. Because if you simply learn, 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 it will all be a theory in your head. And none of it is going to be practical where you can say a phrase, Pam, like that. We know how to explain your thoughts like that. Okay? And I think that if you do that, if you do, if you make sentences every day, it will become more practical, more, how do I say this? More useful. Your knowledge will be more useful, more applicable in the real world. Okay? So, quickly, if you're a beginner, make sentences. Now let me see the chat just so we can kind of talk about it. Um... Okay, going to the very top once again, reading all the, okay, chat and me, Pam. All right, I would like to work with the Russian speaker and help them with English. How do I connect a speaking partner like this? I'm, an, I'm at an intermediate level. You go and download Tandem, Tandem app. Let me, in fact, show it to you. It's a great app. Okay, Tandem. Uh, the website is tandem.net. And if I go, yes, bam. So speak with Tandem, master any language by actually chatting with real people. So it's going to be a, a language exchange app. I want to practice English, Spanish, bam. You know, um, so she's a German speaker. She's an English speaker. They both want to learn each, other, each other's languages. They go on Tandem, download it, and they find each other. Okay, so that's what Tandem is going to do for you. It's a great app. So you can see you can chat, you can video call, you can correct each other's sentences, you can translate them. So it's a great app. It's the best language exchange app that I could find online, really. And I recommend you all check it out. Okay, so that's the first thing. Okay, next. I'm an advanced level. I would like to find a speaker to practice with via uh, Zoom and Skype. Same thing, tandem. Could you teach us how to get around a Russian city like a local? In fact, um, how do I say? Uh, I hope I'm not going to mess up your name. Uh, Adita, Adita. I hope that that's how you say it. Um, we are. We have um, in the plans. We have a travel course to create. Okay, which will start from how to get a visa to Russia, how to you know fly to Russia, the best ways to fly to Russia, best cities to visit. You know, maybe some local places to visit as well. Maybe some like you know not so popular cities to visit those as well. So, but it's it's as you can imagine, it's a big course that we have to work on. But it's in in the works. Okay. All right. Can you see this? Yes, I can. And I already answered your previous question. Okay. Is there any tip for uh, to read faster Cyrillic alphabet? Because I know I know, but sometimes when I try to read it. Faster, it appears something that doesn't let me read faster with no reason. So I guess like what you're asking is, how do I read it faster? And when you see like a big word or something, you may have to kind of process it at first. There is no shortcut. There is no tip for this. Really, you just simply, um, you simply have to get more comfortable with it. You simply have to get more familiar with it. You simply have to just read and read and read and read and read and read until your eye can see it like an English alphabet, or um, I'm not sure where you're from, but your question mark in the beginning shows me that it's, uh, I guess, a Spanish country. I'm, I'm very ignorant when it comes to that, so I might be wrong. But um, you see Cyrillic just like your native language written. And that's when you can sp like read very, very fast. I think it just comes from practice and just doing it over and over and over again. I, I don't think there's any tip, really, that I can give you. Спасибо, пожалуйста. That's it. All right. 
по-русски понимаешь, Денис Денисов, окей, Спартан, окей, whatever, I guess you just got, guys just talking amongst yourselves. Okay, back to uh, the, the slides, and now let's talk about intermediate. My number one advice is speak out loud. All of my intermediate people speak out loud. Maybe, you know, you make sentences, like on, on the left side, right? You make a sentence right here as a beginner, and, and then when you are in an at an intermediate level, you don't just write out ideas, okay? You probably already have a good enough grammar, good enough vocabulary, decent at least vocabulary to make a, like a, a conversation. Typically, intermediate people, what they lack is they lack putting it all together in one cohesive text. You can, you can read it all, you can say it all out loud with no stops, with no pauses. You um, are lacking that, you know, you're lacking that connection between all of your knowledge to be put into one. And the only place that it will happen is when you speak out loud. And not just speak, read something out loud. Speak it. Don't write down sentences. Don't do any of that. Get a topic. Select any topic in the world. It doesn't have to be any like big topics like politics, uh, travel, you know, food. Those are big topics that I think people kind of go for it whenever they have this kind of task. But what, what you can do is you can just look around you and find an object and just describe it. For example, I have a phone. I can describe my phone. Uh, this phone is relatively new. I bought it two years ago. I bought it last year, in fact. You know, I it's, 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 it's black. It's on Android platform. I like it. I use it every single day. I do work on it. I call on it. I text on it. So you can talk about a regular phone for like five minutes straight. And you can do that in Russian. Challenge yourself, get a topic and just get going. Start speaking right then and there. Don't think for too long, just go at it. Okay, and start speaking and see how far you can go, how far you can get. What obstacles will you face? Just like with making a sentence that we have mentioned previously, with this one, first things first, you learn how to put your thoughts into words. If you don't practice that in a second language, then it won't just work like magic. You have to actually practice it so it can start working. Your thoughts don't automatically transfer to your your, your thoughts don't automatically transfer to words in the second language. You have to get used to doing that. Okay, let me go back to myself. So speaking out loud. Um, so that's the first thing. You all your knowledge kind of goes Bam, into one big ball of, of Russian speaking, okay? And you learn how to do that better. That's number one. Number two, you will find what you're missing. You will find, find the, the gaps of your knowledge when you speak. So imagine if I were to ask you, hey, um, talk about your phone, about your phone, where you bought it, when you bought it, how much was it? Do you use it every single day? If I were to ask you all those questions, and you would just simply were asked to speak on the spot. What would be the things that you would, you know, uh, run into when it comes to your obstacles? A lot of the times, it's going to be a lack of vocabulary, of course, right? It's going to be in kind of like an uh, ever existing problem. Even when I speak English now, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm fluent in it. But there's still a lot of things that I don't know. And when I speak English, I have to translate words. I have to look up words. I have to explain it in the most basic way I can because I simply don't know the exact words for every single thing. Unfortunately, still, it's going to be like an ever going, uh, the problem will never go away, I think. So whenever you speak, those, that lack of vocabulary will show exactly the words that you don't, that you don't know that you need to know. If I once again ask you to, to, to talk about your uh, phone, let's say you don't know how to say this phone is on Android platform. How do you say platform in Russian? How do you say Android platform in Russian? You may not know. And then once you're done, oh, I don't know how to say Android platform, took a note of it somewhere. After you're done speaking, you went online and you looked it up and now you know the word. That's, that's one. Uh, and then you will find gaps of knowledge in your grammar as well. Maybe I asked you, when did you buy it? And you couldn't figure out how to properly talk about past tense. That's also a sign that you're missing something and to go back and to relearn that. But the most important thing, I think, uh, it's number three, is it breaks that kind of psychological barrier that you have. 
I'm not asking you yet to go in, and speak into and speak to the person to a Russian native speaker. That's not what I'm uh, asking you to do yet. Okay. And while you're at intermediate level, of course, you may have a conversation here and there, but it's not going to be a full Russian only conversation just yet. It's going to be a little bit harder for you to do. But you, if you speak out loud every time you practice Russian, you won't have as much of nervous kind of thoughts coming into speaking to a native. So imagine if you were to speak Russian to yourself out loud every single day for a month. So that's 30, 30 times you speak Russian out loud for five minutes. If you were to be asked to go and speak to a person, to an actual Russian native, are you going to be nervous? Well, of course, you might be a little bit nervous. Of course, you might be a little bit, kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, you'd be unsure. Your nerves will kind of kick in. And of course, it's still going to be awkward, all those things. But it does not compare to how awkward it would have been if you didn't practice at all. Imagine if you didn't practice Russian speaking at all, and then a native came to you and started asking you questions. You'll be frozen, right? You couldn't, ah, 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 right? So that's what will happen to you. But if you practice for 30 days and then you have to speak to a native, your confidence will be much, much higher. And it's great because having a good confidence is also like a part of the problem, part of the uh, half of the solution. So back to this. Speaking out loud will, number one, show you what you're lacking. That's number one. Two, it will kind of train you how to put everything together. Pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar. Not so much listening, of course. It's going to come into the advanced kind of level then. But still, those three things, grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary, all will kind of gel into one, and you will learn how to do that well. And then finally, of course, number three is it will break the kind of nervousness and, and, and that nervous kind of barrier that you may have. Okay, that's that for the intermediate. Let me go into the chat and see what you guys are asking. Maybe answer some questions here. Okay. All right. Here it is. <clears throat> I play video games in Russian. I try to read... The Cyrillic signs in game, is that a good method of learning? Of course, of course. Russian is supposed to be practical just like this. You know, if you read signs, if you read the subtitles underneath or something, right? Or you read descriptions of, of items in the game, you already have a context of the game, right? So when you see the word Mitch, right? And let's say it's, it's a mobile game, right? And you see Mitch, Mitch on all the swords. Well, that's going to give you a clue that Mitch is a sword, right? And then you're not actually looking that word up, but still you are learning it, right? You still were exposed to it. And maybe some other things are there. Pronunciation is there. You listen to Russian, of course. You read Russian. You just like see all these Russian words around yourself and you're not, and you're not actually learning it when it comes to like actually sitting down and reading a book, but you're still getting exposed to it, which is awesome. Okay. How can I take the best notes? Well, that's really up to you, uh, Zay, Zaynep. Uh, I don't really know what works for you best. You know, um, for myself, I, my my notes are always best when I write them. Just like take a note of them, and just jot down the, the most kind of uh, the things that I am likely to forget. That's what I write typically for myself. But it's different for everybody. It's not like a uh, there's one method for 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 all of for everybody. What methods did you use when learning English and which were most effective? I love your channel. Very helpful. Thanks so much, Lera Howard. I'm glad to help. Uh, methods that I used, I didn't use. That's why I'm teaching is because my methods were not right. You know, I, I dug into theory. I buried myself in the theory of rush of English. And that did not give me a lot of good results. When I came to the States, I came to, I think I, had, I can delete this tandem app thing. I came to New York and I was lost. I couldn't find my bus station and I couldn't ask a simple question of where the bus station is. I had the address. I couldn't figure it out because I would ask a question. Yeah, but I would understand what they would tell me. So that was a huge failure. I learned English since I was five and all the way through elementary, middle school, high school. 
that's like what 11 11 12 years and two years of actual like grinding the english language but what helped me learn the most effectively is when i got to the states i was uh, in the university i started simply copying the way natives spoke and the way and the uh, phrases natives used and the way they spoke and the way they carry themselves and the way they express themselves when it comes to like nonverbal language that was the most effective when i started copying the way english people spoke to me without thinking oh well i learned it this way and you're saying it this way you must be incorrect because I, I i learned it in a book who cares if they speak it in their country and they're being understood copy that so that's what i did that was uh, my method Oh, thanks so much. The the tumors is pronunciation of and vocab rather than grammar. Okay, um, grammar is grammar is there for a reason. Of course, it helps you structure your vocabulary into a nice sentence that makes sense. Grammar also allows you to be very precise with your thoughts. Um, you know, when you have a lot of vocabulary, you may sometimes not put it in the right kind of order, or you may not use it right. So I would say it's a combination between the two. I think when you first start out, vocabulary is half and half with grammar. So half the time vocabulary, half the time grammar. But then, you know, after you kind of get a basic foundation of Russian, then maybe do 70% grammar, 30%, sorry, 70% vocabulary, 30% grammar. So increasing in vocabulary more and more as you learn, as you keep on learning. And then finally, when you're advanced, 95% is going to be vocabulary and just like speaking and listening and all, and all other skills and 5% grammar because by that time you probably will already um, learn the majority of, of Russian grammar anyway. Uh, sorry, this isn't a question, but I would just like to say you explain things, you explain everything very well and I appreciate it. Your channel helps a lot. Thank you so much, YouTube Gamer. I'm so, I'm so happy to help. Um, okay. Я знаю, что музыка не очень полезный источник, от кого выучить русский от кого учить русский, либо какие группы твои любимые. Я тоже ищу канал на ютубе для большого ума с русскими субтитрами, как Арзамас. So pretty much the question is, uh, I know that Russian music isn't the, the, most useful the most useful resource for learning Russian, but how are, uh, what are your most favorite bands? And I also am uh, trying to find Russian YouTube channels to kind of um, learn more Russian. And yeah, I would say Abarona, I... My my favorite bands are not Russian. I listen to a lot of rock music, and unfortunately, rock is not the the genre in Russia. <laughs> it is some some things are there, but not as much of quality. So, and I don't really watch Russian. I don't even watch YouTube like that. Um, so, it's really hard for me to give for me to give you advice because it just really it depends on on your taste. It's very subjective. So I would just say just search out there and find the one that you love and maybe look at some top like top 50 Russian channels, top 50 Russian uh, intellectual channels or top 50 Russian learning channels, whatever, you know, and you and you find the ones that you love. Uh, okay. Oh, it went all the way down. Okay. I think. Uh, all right. How do I set up a Russian keyboard on, the, on your computer if you're using a regular English keyboard? You can just simply type up Russian keyboard Windows 10 or a Russian keyboard MacBook, whatever you have. And then you can also order Russian stickers on Amazon. Or uh, you can probably find it in your country as well in some online store. And uh, I used to have it on my keyboard. I would just simply just like take one sticker, put it on one key, take another sticker, put it on another key. But right now, I don't have to have it. I only have English on my keyboard, and I know where Russian letters are already. So I don't have to have it now. So hope that helps. RSZ. Juan says, I have a question about numeration of Russian, for example, about decimal numbers, how to say them. Look it up. This is just simply a matter of vocabulary. There's not much I can explain. Uh, there is simply just look it up and see, uh, you know, how to say it. I do it in Metro Exodus. Uh, I read all the posts about, okay, who's, who's that? Maybe that's another, another donation. Um, and apocalyptic science and listen to Russian audio. Yeah, that's good. Metro, I, I don't know this game, but hope it helps. Hope it helps. Hope it's uh, helpful to you. Should one learn just words and grammar first or learn sentences and repeat them till you memorize them? Phrases and uh, learning as a sentence is good when it's a certain message or a certain idea like я хочу есть i want to eat you don't have to learn я then хочу 
than yes separately, it's all one phrase. But it's good if you can understand each part. But of course, if you learn just as a whole, then that's better. It's going to save you a lot of time. But try to understand each individual part of the phrase that you're learning. When does a foreign accent become bad pronunciation? Like, it's okay to have a subtle difference in pronunciation, or does that just sound amateur? When you first start learning, you will have an accent. There's no way around it. You simply, the muscles that are used in your language are different from, from Russian. After many years of speaking English, I still have an English accent. Maybe it's not as bad as it used to be, and it's not as much of a barrier when I speak. But of course, after I speak some Russian for like an hour or two, then don't ask me to speak English because I'm going to have a bad accent. It's because you kind of, you change up your gears and it's kind of bad. But as long as people understand you, I think that's a good sign of how you can really tell if you have a bad accent or, or, or not. So I would just simply say, you know, um, see how people react and respond to your accent. If it's good, if it's not that bad, if it's not that bad, if they understand you, don't worry about it. But of course, if it's a barrier, then you might have to change it up. You might have to do some work on that. So yeah. Uh, how much does it cost to, on average, to learn Russian? I'm um, Lithuanian, by the way. Uh, it's. I think it goes for, for everybody. Lithuanian is going to be easier because you cannot have a similar pronunciation to Russian. But I would give you 1,500 hours. That's the mark. 1,500 hours to learn Russian and be fluent in it. I'm, a, I'm a, at intermediate advanced level and my wife is a newcomer beginner. How can we work together in learning? We plan to move to Nikol Nikolaev, Ukraine from USA in a year. It's not much that you can do together. I think you can help her and have a conversation with her, of course. And you can help her a lot. It's not much you can do together because you are, you are studying different things. You know, you are studying... You probably are focusing more on vocabulary while she's still learning like grammar stuff. Uh, but I would say maybe get into the same programs. And I think you can help her out more than she can help you out. But um, yeah, that's about it. I don't think there's much you can do, you guys can do together. Even if we were to have like a session, if I were to have a session with you and your wife, I would probably ask you, hey, can I talk to you first and to you? Because it's going to be different advice. The only thing you can, you can do to help each other out is to maybe get in the same course and uh, <laughs> do it, you know, individually as well. Don't, you know, overpay for it. I also listened to Victor Tsoi and Yuri Wisber. Wisbers? I, I, I don't know who this guy is, but I know Victor Tsoi. Is it fine? Two sounds like Hachu Perimen and Mio Emoya. Perimen требуют наши сердца. That's the song. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, I don't want to get demonetized. I was going to turn it on, but <laughs> I might get demonetized for that. Uh, yes, of course. It's If you're a beginner, intermediate, just, I think, listening to songs is great for, for pronunciation, mostly. Because vocabulary is going to be very situational and very poetic at times. So, yeah, just listen to that for most of pronunciation and maybe some words of vocabulary. Okay. Can you please tell me the difference uh, between мне, меня, тебе, тебя? It's simply a difference between a genitive case and a dative case. Look that up. How can I make sure that I'm learning Russian properly? Do you have tips? I, I took a class for a bit, but now I'm learning independently. You, my only tip is judge your overall communication level. So uh, how, how you can do that is you can have a conversation with a person and see if you're getting better or not. You know, what are your mistakes? What are you lacking? What's your lack of knowledge when you speak to a person? What's limiting you? Once you speak, take a note of that. And then whenever you go back to learn or study, just simply take care of that. You know, if you're lacking vocabulary, go back and study vocabulary and things like that. And then do the same thing in a month and kind of have your own kind of self-test, I guess. Oh, I kind of skip all the way down. Oh, Abarona, thank you so much. Number one fan. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, last question, then we go to the last advanced section, and then I'm going to come back to this. What about comprehensible input? Love your channel. What's comprehensible input? I'm not sure what this means, so I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> All right, one more. Um, 
Федор, извините, но хочу английский подсекать и прошу инстанцев помочь. Да, пожалуйста, мне не жалко. To help with pronunciation of my name is Aditya. Yeah, I... Okay, good. Another question, okay. Verona, once again, thank you. I know that you have to remember the stress of every word, but is there a pattern that could that could help us with other forms of 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 a word? Like most, but not must too. Thanks for answering. I think million reasons. I think great nickname, first of all. <laughs> There's no pattern. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no overall pattern to Russian stress. Of course, certain things like a certain prefix will change the stress of a word in a certain way, but it will also change from a word to word, you know? So it's not going to be a complete um, pattern there. So it's just simply a matter of memorization, unfortunately. All right, so we stopped at million reasons. So let me go back to advanced and then the last note as well. And then I can go back to answer my questions. If you are an advanced learner, my number one advice is have conversations. Oops, it's a typo. Can I fix it? Let me see. No, I cannot fix. I cannot have an R. Ah. All right, well, we're gonna just go with the typo, okay? All right, have conversations. When, you know, it was funny, I looked at the word when I was, you know, putting this together, like something is wrong there, something doesn't look right, but now I know, <laughs> it's missing an R. Conversations, have conversations in Russian. You are at a point where you have a good vocabulary, good enough vocabulary, great grammar, I, I would assume if you're an advanced learner. Have conversations. It should be in your almost daily practice to have a Russian conversation with an actual person. Practice it. Challenge yourself to, to speak Russian, to speak Russian more. That would be one of the only ways you can truly benefit from learning Russian is when you speak and when you either, number one, you're borrowing, borrowing the things that they say or you simply are seeing if what you say makes sense. Okay? Let me go to just myself. So... When you have a conversation, if you're saying something wrong, you will tell immediately from another person's face, right? They'll be like, uh, okay, I don't understand that, right? They will tell you, I don't, I, I don't understand you. That's a sign that something is wrong. Maybe your pronunciation is wrong. But the best thing from having a conversation is the ability to copy the native, okay? So when you speak, like in my case, when I came to the States, I simply... We would have we would go to a cafeteria with my teammates, sit together. I wouldn't talk much in the beginning because I couldn't say much, you know. I would simply listen to them and hear them speak and hear the phrases that they would say. At first, I'm telling you, I couldn't understand 90%. 10% I would and then I slowly kind of, okay, 10%, 11%, 13%. 19%, 25%, right? So I will simply learn new words and my listening will get better. I will learn the way they say things, what they say, the words they use, kind of figure those out, translate certain things, ask for what they mean, you know, when they speak to me and they say something, what's going on? At first, I couldn't, I didn't know that that was a question. What's going on? Like, it's how are you almost, right? And they said, uh, what do you mean by that? What's going on? They said, well, how are you? Okay, so now I know. How are you? And what's going on have kind of the same meaning. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to say, hey, what's going on? Versus, hey, how are you? Because what's going on is more relaxed. It's more natural, more authentic, you know, in the American English. So, and then phrase by phrase, encounter by encounter, I learn more and more and more. The same thing will happen to you whenever you're going to be speaking to a Russian person. You will copy what they say. You will uh, borrow their vocabulary and their tone of voice their non-verbal kind of language and things like that. So make sure that you have conversations as regularly as you can. Hire a person to speak to. Find a Russian language exchange partner to speak to. Go to Russia. Maybe take a, you know, a class in Russia somewhere. Maybe go and do maybe work in Russia. Whatever. It can be many things. But if you are an advanced learner, have conversations. So to kind of sum it all up, let me actually, in fact, give you another piece of information. Actually, before I do that, okay. If you're a beginner, make sentences every time you practice. If you're intermediate, speak out loud every time you practice. And then if you're an advanced uh, um, learner, 
have conversations every time you practice, of course, as much as you can. Because you might not have a person speaking to you every day. You might have a family member to speak to, of course, but you may not. So it's uh, whatever you can do, do that. But if you need, of course, more detail on each of these points and you're tuning in to this live stream a little bit late, you can, of course, then go back and, 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 and see what we say about beginner, intermediate, and advanced individually to um, get more info. But another thing is at all those levels, what you can do also is is songs, movies, shows, easy Russian stuff. Okay, I'm covering songs. Bam. I'm very, very small in the corner. Oh, let me go right here. Maybe I can enlarge myself a little bit. Bam. Okay, songs, movies, shows, easy Russian videos on YouTube, whatever videos, you know, we make uh, super easy Russian, we make fast Russian, we make real Russian where I simply speak Russian, and you can listen to, to that as well. But you can, of course, listen to songs, watch movies, watch shows, and borrow the actual Russian native kind of words and native expressions, of course. This is not to say that, oh, only make sentences or only speak out loud. Do that in the combination with things that you like. When you, there's no like right or wrong band to listen to. There, there is no right or wrong show to watch. If you enjoy the show, if you enjoy the song, if you enjoy the movie, watch it. And my recommendation is that you have as much fun as you can. You shouldn't be, just simply watching a Russian show in Russian, no subtitles, understand 2%, not have that much fun, but I have to do this. I have to, I have to, I have to. No, you don't. You should have fun. You should be having fun while you're doing it because if you don't have fun, most likely you won't pay as much attention. You won't be as attentive. You won't be as invested in watching it and trying to understand it. Let me go back. Okay, so... Um, have fun. Maybe if you watch a Russian show in Russian, do the first 10 minutes as like a practice thing, right? You watch it, you're trying, to, you're trying to understand. And then switch back to English or English subtitles so you can have fun still and enjoy it. Because in my opinion, the more you enjoy it, the, the better it's going to be in long term, regardless of, of how, how much time you spend with it. You know, I think that if you just simply have fun, and you challenge yourself at the same time. Of course, it should be a good combination between a challenge and having fun. So kind of judge that on your own and see what works, what doesn't work. And uh, yeah, let me go back to the chat. That, that was that was it for today, guys. Um, let me just now go back to the chat and answer some more questions that you guys have. Okay. It's a game set in post-apocalyptic Russia. So it's like, I guess, similar to um, Chernobyl. Uh, what do you suggest to learn so many words? Which vocabulary? You just simply have flashcards and just spend an hour after hour after hour every day. And that's it, really. Message retracted. Oh, I think... Oh, you did it yourself. Okay. How do Russians learn the imperfective and perfective aspects of verbs in Russia? Do they learn verbs in pairs? Делать, сделать, писать, написать, etc. No, Andrea, it just simply comes natural to us. It's not something that we actually think about when we speak. You know, uh, it's just something that we kind of say every day and we don't even think about it. We don't learn them in pairs, no. We kind of just, you know, get exposed to many words like deal it and we kind of feel the context of it and when to use it. Same with deal it, да deal it, переdeal it, уdeal it, what else? Pre-deal it, you know, all those certain prefixes, we kind of just simply know when to use them and what they mean. We don't get into into too much of the grammatical aspect of it, you know, so. But it's not going to be that good for a learner, I would say. I think as a learner, you need to know um, all those little intricacies. I would like to know if there's a page where I can see movies or series with Russian subtitles and at the same time with English in order to learn faster. Thanks. A great website is 3ears.com. Let me guys, let me show you guys 3ears.com. Oh, and uh, before we actually go there, I wanted to, before um, we go to 3ears, one thing that I do recommend for all of you guys, of course, is something that we are having soon is the 30 speaking challenge. Okay, right here, we start on, on September 14th. It's the epitome of practical learning. What we do is 
from week one, week two, week three, week four, we have a task on uh, each day. This is just like a mock kind of um, thing. Pronunciation, speaking, listening, vocab, listening, etc. As you can see, every day we do something different. But of course, it's not going to be this kind of structure. It's just, 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 it's just like an example right now. But it's going to be speaking, listening, and vocabulary for 30 days. Each day you'll be challenged to speak Russian, to maybe uh, learn new vocabulary, uh, practice speaking, practice listening, practice something else. So it's 26 tasks total. Okay, let me actually, I can probably zoom into this, right? Yeah, Pam, that's better. 26 tasks total in 30 days. So we're not going to do on Sunday task. We're going to focus on communication, of course, because it's important for you guys to um, speak Russian, learn vocabulary. We're only going to cover useful Russian. No slang, uh, sorry, no, no, un, like kind of very formal and things that you would not use. And yeah, and what we have is, of course, the premium package. Let me talk about that a little later. We start at $49.99 for the whole 30 days. Uh, that just includes whatever I just described. So 26 tasks, you submit it every day. Okay, am I covering anything? No, no okay, cool. Uh, you submit it every day. When we send it to you, you send it back to me. I, I give you feedback on your actual current Russian and things you need to work on. And if you want to have more resources, join with the premium. Uh, you will have access to our library of resources with you know different courses, different grammar courses as well. And of course, private session with me, one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on a weekly basis. So in 30 days, that's four weeks, you're gonna have four sessions with me, one-on-one, -on -one, talking about speaking Russian. We can talk about your Russian and your overall progress and things we have to work on. We start on, uh, September 14th. We don't have that many spots left because we do have to kind of consider um, we do have to consider how much time we can dedicate to each person. So we're not going to have a lot of uh, people join. So just make sure that you're joined now before before it's too late. Okay. Uh, okay. And now going to three years, something that I uh, wanted to show. So we started working with three years um, recently. Um, to kind of give them more content and then we're going to use it on our BeFluent class platform, on our own platform for learning Russian. Uh, but for example, this movie right here is it's called Stilagi. You go in here, you let it load. <laughs> As you can see it's a movie right here. Let me go to, okay, let's say So as you can see, when he was saying this phrase, so and you see it gets it gets highlighted with each word he says. English translation right here. You click on let's say you don't know the word lintaye. You see good for nothing, now an animate masculine. Um, you, uh, some are lazy, you know. So kind of like that. And then of course you can make it full screen. Okay, how do we, uh, I think you can close this somehow. This, no. How do I? I think you can, no. Wait, how can I close this? But anyway, you can probably figure it out. I, I could close it before. Now I can't no more, but okay, it, it's, I have to figure it out. So yeah, and you can watch it with English and Russian subtitles and kind of uh, have fun with that. Okay, so three years that count. Well, I guess I, I could be covering the phrase that he was saying, but I guess you get the point. All right, back to the chat. Thank you so much, Sean, Sean Patterson. Thank you so much. Oh my God, it, it just skips a whole bunch of people. I have a lisp and I struggle with z, z and s and Russia like sha and sha and attempts for English native with lisp learning Russian. Unfortunately, I don't have any advice because I'm not really um, a professional in that area, but I know that people have um, to have a lisp in Russia as well. So it's not like a big thing, I think. Uh, can I improve through watching Russian series or should I improve my vocabulary before? You can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. People don't, don't, don't have manners, I guess. 
Um, can I improve through Russian? Of course you can. But like I said, watch it with, uh, have fun while you're doing I guess I covered that after you asked the question already. Just learning Russian. And uh, where can I find a complete pronunciation guide and all the legends and conjugations? Uh, you can probably look up each topic. We cover a lot of it here on this channel. So, um, yeah. Uh, kind of just look it up as, as they come. There's not a place where is a complete guide to everything. We kind of on, uh, working on that right now with our platform to have everything there, but we don't have it all yet. But feel free to check it out. It's on our website, beeflintinrussian.com. You'll find it there. It's called Beeflint Class. Um, so yeah, check it out. Me and a friend decided to start learning Russian together for fun. Spaghetti guy says. How can we learn and help each other? We only started last week, so we're total beginners. I would say if you have some cash, um, join our BFluent class. It's really for people just like you who just simply started out. It's 20 bucks a month. I wouldn't be mad if you guys use the same account, <laughs> you know, but it's a, I think it's a great tool for all the beginners who are just learning, uh, starting to learn Russian. Let me, uh, if, if you go online, it's going to be BFluent in Russian.com slash register. Okay, uh, let me send this in the chat as well. Like this link right here, beflintinrussian.com slash register. And it's gonna be very helpful, I think. But um, to start, how, how can you help each other? You should simply, I think, share what you have learned. And you study the same thing and quiz each other on the topic and ask each other questions, challenge each other, uh, and challenge each other's knowledge. I think it's gonna be great uh, because you really, sometimes you don't know you don't know if you learn something correctly or not, and another person can have a different perspective. I think that's the best way, is to like bounce off each other, each other's ideas almost. Uh, would you recommend Soviet opera for beginners? Uh, I don't know. If 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 you like it, if you can learn from that, sure. But with operas, you you tend to not really understand what they're saying as much. So. Um, would you recommend children's shows as a way to learn vocabulary? I find I can understand most of what's being said, but I worry it might stun my vocab. No, it won't. I think kids' vocabulary is good. Sometimes it can be a little more challenging, actually, than a regular person's, like an adult vocabulary. But children's shows is great, I think, uh, especially, you know, cartoons for younger kids, like two years old, because people talk very, very clearly, and they don't use too difficult of vocabulary and they go very slowly so i think you can learn from that much much uh, better coming back to opera question i seem to understand more words than i go and I, then i go blank again so what do i do um with opera you it's it's just simply a lack of vocabulary you just simply maybe get subtitles for the things that you're watching for opera i'm not sure if, if you even have subtitles for opera but what did you what did you not understand learn those words and next time you will hear them, you won't be in the dark anymore. Can listening to music be helpful for making your ears use the pronunciation and slang? Or is it inefficient compared to normal memorizing? I think it's good. I think it's good because it's also kind of like passive learning. You can just kind of turn it on in a car when you're driving with something, when you're doing other things. You cannot actively learn Russian while you're like cooking or something, right? But you can turn it, turn it on in your, in your ear and you're going to be fine. I think it's good. I hope you don't mind, but I have one more question. How can I improve my listening? I find that I have trouble keeping up with native speakers. Uh, where are you in your in your Russian? You know, if if you're a beginner, then I would say listen to easy Russian videos that people have on on YouTube. We have a whole bunch of them. If you go on that channel, it's listen to Russian playlist. You can find it there, uh, and just start doing that with Russian subtitles and see if you can understand what's being said. You know, and um, yeah, that's the first thing. If you are intermediate, maybe start watching shows. If you are advanced, watch some interviews or speak to Russians. And that would be the, really the best thing that you can do is to listen to interviews because people are just simply speaking, right? It's not like a show when it's scripted, when it's double takes and triple takes and things like that. Uh, okay. Are you United States citizen able to get a... Are, are U.S. citizens able to get a visa for a learning experience or work? America not viewed well by most nations at the moment. Yeah, I mean, polit uh, the politics can be different at times, but their travel rules don't just change like this, you know. Of course, U.S. citizens can get a visa. My 
now wife, then she was my girlfriend, got a visa to go to Russia to study um, Russian. So, yeah. Can you recommend any good books which are comprehensible and not too difficult? I would say get some learner's books, uh, some, you know, stories, dialogues for learners. Those would be the best. Is Brata a Russian, cla Brat Russian classic? Yes, I used to focus on Russian literature, but the movie got me into cinema. Yes, Brat is considered to be Russian classic, and people know Brat anywhere you go. Do you have any kind of motivation for me to to push and learn Russian with more confidence? Gavin, your, I don't have uh, any push for you. Your motivation should come from the inside. Uh, what would be a good way to make Russian a part of my daily life as, an, as a necessity rather than feeling forced and boring? Uh, I think, you know, it should be, like you said, it should not be boring and forced. Watch, maybe flip flip the language on your phone to Russian. Do things that you're doing now currently. Try to do them in Russian. Maybe watch a show in Russian. Maybe watch, listen to Russian news, Russian music, things like that. And maybe that will help. Well, would this class be available in the future? Yes, it's going to be in the recording on the channel. Again, it skips, man. All right. Thanks for this amazing lesson, Fedor. Uh, may you and Victoria be blessed with eternal happiness. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Adita. I'm, uh, I'm happy, to, uh, happy to help. Uh, let's show on Spotify music app. So we're the no sub. Yeah, just so I Okay. Yeah, well, just do something where you have subtitles. I think it's going to be a great beginning. Uh, who are some of your favorite musical artists? Alter Bridge, um, American band, rock band, kind of hard rock metal band. Disturbed, Avenged Sevenfold. Actually, uh, I don't have it here. Ah, no. Oh, yeah, it's right there. One second. guys watch the video actually it's gonna come out tomorrow i'll talk about clothes uh and i'm talking about me buying a jacket for myself like a sweater so i bought a vent sevenfold jacket pam with a bat oops with a bat on the back of it ah! oops where is it like this i guess bam scary but this is a russian uh oh, sorry not russian band american rock band that I, I like to listen to a lot so i love it um, so yeah, Avenged Sevenfold, Disturbed, uh, Alter Bridge, Chimanti as a band. Uh, I like to listen to a lot of sometimes hip hop, like I, I like listen to, listening to Eminem, and I guess that would, that would be it. Yeah, just want to thank you for for everything you do. Keep up the great work, especially by Shoya. Happy to help. Will you start to make content for intermediate slash advanced people? Uh, we do have a little bit here and there. We just try to simply um, um, do a lot of content that's more kind of demanding for people. I think intermediate slash advanced people kind of can find the answers for themselves to the questions that are burning questions. But of course, if things that we feel like people are misunderstanding or we have a better way of explaining it, We'll make a video about it. We have a lot of content coming up for uh, intermediate advanced people on our website, on BeFluent Class, on our platform. But I think for intermediate slash advanced people, the reason why there's not a lot of content on our channel is because at that stage, it's more about practice. It's less about grammar and about vocabulary kind of discrepancies here and there. It's more, just, it's more about just simply talking, speaking Russian and doing those things. That's why it's not that much on our channel. This is a fun question, but do you play video games? Of course. Let me show you something. I guess, I hope I can. Okay, one second. <laughs> um, let me show you my screen. If it will load, geez. Okay, let me go back. Where is it? Okay, it's loading. All right, I'm, go I'm, I'm uh, one second, Adita. So I started learning Russian over five months ago and signed up for a speaking challenge last week. Thanks. Thanks for helping out along the way. I'm looking forward to the course. Me too. Uh, looking forward to it too. What do you think about FME method for learning languages? I don't know what FME method is. Can you tell me so I can give my 
opinion about that. About that. How do I know the difference between Moi Moi and Maya? Your channel is, has helped me understand Russian more with, while I'm on Dolinga, by the way. Good. It's Moi Maya and Mai is simply a matter of gender. Moi is masculine, Maya is feminine, Mai is, is plural. Just type in YouTube Russian gender of nouns and you'll find the answer to that. But what I want to show you answering Aditya's question is this. Is this library of uh, my library of, of games on, on Steam is uh, what I uh, play recently. I, I play. I used to play a lot of Dota. You know, as you can see, two thousand hours total. So play Dota, Dota on the on the Lords. So We're playing. Me and my friends playing Dying Light currently. I play Wolfenstein by myself, but I have one hundred and thirty five games. A lot of them are not there because they're hidden. I don't know how to show that. Okay. No, that's not it. Yeah, I guess this is all kind of the games. Wait, I used to have much more than this. It's probably some some are just hidden. Yeah, I I hit I uh, hit a lot of them. Okay, let me see. It's some, well, I don't even know. How do I show, like, I, I hit them, but how do I see where all of them are? It's okay, it's whatever, I guess. All right, so yeah, I, I, I do like to play a lot of games <laughs> when I have free time. Uh, okay. Do you like Mochai Doma? I don't know what that is, unfortunately. I'd like to read his lyrics. I guess that it's, it's Ben or artist. Yeah, if, if you like it, go for it. Do, do you listen to Hard Bass? I don't. From artists from... No, I don't. I think Hard Bass is like... It, it was a, a thing for like a, one summer or something. And then it kind of became the Russian, the stereotypical Russian thing that now it's made for foreigners, not for Russians. I, I haven't heard Hard Bass in, in Russia for forever. Thank you, Tumors, for incorrectly writing Brother. So <laughs> the last for apology. <laughs> oh my god, thanks. Now where can I find someone to practice my Russian with? Uh tandem app. Tandem language exchange. I'm learning Russian to understand the Russian perspective of the on the Cold War. That's good. Do you know any specific documentaries or books that you'd recommend? I don't know. No. I, I learn about it through like various Cold War YouTube videos and when we learned it in our history uh, lessons in school. I don't have any books that I would read by myself about it. Um, favorite uh, stalker? Uh, I still have to. I still have to go through them. I still have to get through them because I know that there is a second stalker come stalker uh, stalker. I'm gonna say it in Russian stalker coming out. So yeah. What do you think of Indians? Also, damn, you have uh, Stalker and Dota 2, you're a true gamer, my lord. Sorry for doubting you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not, not a true gamer. I think I, I'm, I play for fun whenever I have free time. And uh, I do have a lot of it because, you know, I kind of, especially with this pandemic, I work for Be Fluent. You know, I work from home, so I don't have to travel from, you know, home to work and back and forth. So I have a lot of free time to play. Um, of Indians, I don't have any, any sort of opinion on Indians that I didn't have any like it's just neutral I think it's just like any other nation just like in, like anybody else I did have a, uh, an Indian professor in school he was a cool dude his name was Sharad Maheshwari he was a cool dude yeah what are the best Russian movies or series to watch it depends it's up to you there's a, a whole bunch on Netflix just find whatever one you like yeah have you seen Gopniks on the streets in Russia I of course <laughs> I wouldn't say that I was a Gopnik myself, but I kind of grew up in the area where Gopnik was like, you know, the population. Of course, they're not going to be sitting on the streets a lot. They're just like doing their own thing, hanging out, drinking and stuff. But it's not like they're not disruptive or anything. I think people uh, have a bad rep on Gopnik. So, yeah, it's like only a few of kind of these aggressive kind of Gopniks on the streets. But I think all... Regular people are not like that, you know. 
Uh, is there a specific time or day of your, for your live streams here on YouTube, Hugs from Brazil? It's just kind of randomly, so no no schedule. Do you live in Russia? I don't. I would love to. I live in the States, uh, and I plan to go back, back and forth between Russia and the States whenever things open up. Do you have any tips for better ways to remember words in Russian? For some reason, it's really hard for me to remember the words in Russian, and I forget them really, really, really quickly. Do flashcards. Flashcards help a whole bunch. Uh, download this app called Anki, A-N-K-I, A-N-K-I. So it's like this, Anki, and it's going to be good. Okay. Uh, I'm spreading the Gopnik culture in India. <laughs> What are Gopniks against? It's like uh, if you are if familiar with the it's like chavs or ignorant people who are very aggressive and typically thought of like low lives kind of people, I guess. St. Petersburg, best city to study in in university and live in Russia. If not, what would you recommend? Uh, Moscow, Moscow, um, St. Petersburg, and Novosibirsk. Novosibirsk is far; it's my hometown, but it has a great scientific station there. But St. Petersburg and Moscow are the best, I think, and has more variety for, for tourists and is much more equipped for tourists. And it's really up to you um, what kind of person you are and what kind of university you like to get into. Do you rec recommend shadowing method, like shadowing from people, I guess? If, if that's what you mean, then yes. Can you recommend any Russian rock metal shine down? I forgot shine down. They kind of went, went downhill with their latest albums. With their, when they kicked their um, guitar player, they kind of went down in the in the in the in the, in the uh, you know rock. Uh, I don't have, unfortunately, any Russian rock bands to recommend. There's not many of them there, and it's typically just kind of a copycat of American bands or English bands, and it's not that much there to you know to interest me really. Have you ever been to Vladivostok? Yes, I have been to Vladivostok last year. When I got, no, two years ago, when I got my visa, no, last year, yeah, last year, when I got my visa renewed, I had to fly to Vladivostok, it was great, it was awesome, but I was only there for like four hours. What made you decide to spread this awesome language and culture to new people who are interested? My family is Slavic, but retained no culture, so it's great. Um, what inspired me was that when I came here, I realized that people don't have a good understanding of who Russians are and what, who they are as, as people. And I was like, you know what? There's a lot of stereotypes, a lot of bad things, bad rap to Russians. And people just simply believe the news because they, they cannot, they don't speak Russian. They cannot go into Russia. They cannot uh, watch Russian news. But I think when I decided to do it is when I realized that if I just spread the language to people who are interested, they will go to, to, Russia to find out what Russians truly are as people and it will kind of stop this hate between the, the, the cultures, hate between the nations and politicians will be kind of forced to cooperate versus fight against each other because people are like this, that means that politicians have to be like this as well and not like that. But while people are divided, it's so easy to just um, do whatever you want with aggression and stuff like that. When did you move to the United States? I studied, I went to school here, met my wife here. My wife is American and it's just easier and better for her to be here. Well, to me, it doesn't really matter. As a tourist, what am I seeing in Moscow and St. Petersburg if I ever go there? I am a tourist in Moscow and St. Petersburg myself, so it's not like I know a lot. So I'll just simply read, read on some guides. I'm from Novosibirsk. I don't really know much about St. Petersburg and Moscow besides what I've just seen there, but that's just, you know, basic things. Do you know any Russian bands that, that I like Imagine Dragon, if you know them? I don't know them, but I don't listen to Russian bands. Um, so I'm, I'm not like a good person to, to go for. Yeah. Have you heard the songs by Lube? Of course. It's a Russian rock band. Kind of a Russian rock band. It's not like kind of pop rock. kind of. Not pop rock, but yeah, pop. More like pop. And Putin is a fan. Yeah, I guess it's, it's an old like... Russia, go Russia, I love Russia kind of band. That's that's what I put in this word. When was the last time you encountered an English word you don't know or recognize? Uh, maybe a couple of days ago. I don't recall what it was, but I, I get that feeling from, from here and there, you know. I, I would say every week. Do you like Vicherny Urgan? I think that's a good way to learn Russian. Yes, it's a great, great evening show. Yeah, 
<laughs> I watch Soviet cartoons too and listen to radio and good music in Russian. Thank you so much for help. Uh, Vit, Vit Sopra, you're welcome. Yes, it's a great resource and what you're doing is great. Keep it up. You're very good, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Have it to help. Did Doomer music originate in Russian culture or is it just an, an internet thing? What's a Doomer music? I don't know what Doomer music is. Sorry. What's your favorite Russian food? Pilmeni. Pilmeni is like dumplings. It's my favorite Russian food. And uh, yeah, others are kind of like Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Georgian food that kind of is in Russia because I use the star, of course. So yeah. But all right, guys, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful chat. I loved how we kind of uh, chatted at the end there. So thank you so much for all of you guys who have joined. Join our 30 Day Speaking Challenge is the link in the description. Join us today. We are running out of spots slowly but surely. Secure spots today to learn how to speak better, how to um, listen better, how to increase your vocabulary with great advice from us, from Bifluent team. We're going to share everything that we know with you and challenge you to speak Russian and challenge you to use your Russian in a conversational way. Yeah, I'll see you all next time. See you all tomorrow with the video with the super easy Russian to train your listening. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, thank you so much for joining.